Welcome to Moon Trees Live 2. The Forest Service provided hundreds of tree seeds to NASA, who launched them into space as a part of the Artemis 1 mission. In this set of three videos, we're exploring what happens next with those seeds. First up, Splashdown. How was the Orion spacecraft recovered, and how were the seeds unpacked? Now, in case you missed Moon Trees Live 1, Check it out and learn about how these tree seeds were prepared for their journey through space. But today, let's pick up where we left off and talk about what happened when the seeds returned to Earth. Artemis 1 is what NASA called this mission, but Orion is the name of the actual spacecraft. See all of these other parts? All of that is basically used to push Orion during different parts of its spaceflight. That leaves just this part here as Orion. After flying almost 270,000 miles beyond the moon, Orion returned and entered Earth's atmosphere at about 24,500 miles per hour. Now you might not realize, but the outside of Orion gets really hot when it comes to Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere is like a brake that slows down the spacecraft so it can land relatively slowly and the heat generated during those braking maneuvers neared 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like half as hot as the surface of the sun. But Orion comes prepared with the world's largest ever heat shield and a protection system that keeps the inside nice and cool. Now this re-entry was really unique because it's the first time we've ever had a spacecraft try a skip entry. What Orion did was it dipped into the Earth's atmosphere then it lifted back into space, and then finally went all the way through the atmosphere. It's basically like skipping a stone across the surface of water. Since our spacecraft is landing in the Pacific Ocean, as long as the weather is good, the skip entry allows Orion to get much closer to the California coast than any previous missions. So that way, our ships don't have to travel so far out to recover it. When Orion entered our atmosphere, it was traveling faster than the speed of sound, which means it made a sonic boom. But that means it had to put on the brakes because if it hit the ocean at that speed, it would probably break the spacecraft. So Orion deployed a series of parachutes in order to slow down. In fact, there were 11 parachutes in total. First, there were the three parachutes that helped separate the forward bay cover then there were two drogue parachutes that helped stabilize the crew module. Then there were three pilot parachutes that helped deploy the final parachutes. Finally, the last three main parachutes came out and slowed Orion to about 17 miles an hour when it finally touched the ocean. Orion splashed down off the coast of Baja, California, where the USS Portland was standing by to recover it. The Navy took out smaller boats to get up close to Orion, where they could do some initial inspections and attach some tow lines. Orion was then pulled up onto the USS Portland into an area called a well deck. Once Orion was secure, the gates were closed, water was drained from the well deck. The spacecraft was then taken to the Navy base in San Diego. So then the Orion capsule was loaded onto a truck and carried by ground transportation over nine days from California all the way back to Florida to the Kennedy Space Center where it launched from. The next thing technicians would do is open up the craft and remove anything from the inside that needs to be removed. And among that are payloads. So payloads are anything that goes to space like science or spare parts. And some payloads may need different treatment than other payloads. All payloads aren't the same. Some payloads have different requirements for how they're handled. They may need to be gently unpackaged and then passed over to various groups of scientists who need to collect data. Special care is taken to ensure that payloads have their environmental concerns met. Maybe they need to be kept within a special temperature range. They might need power, so they might need to be powered by batteries while they're being transferred from the ship to the shore to their final destination in a science lab. 
And in the case of our moon tree seeds, because they're part of a partnership between NASA and the USDA Forest Service, they were shipped back to experts at the Forest Service for examination. So now we can start those examinations on our end to see how the moon tree seeds did on their journey. And it's all thanks to being part of that Orion payload. Payloads are one of the coolest parts that come off of spacecraft because that's where you get the science from. And that's what helps the payload developers, the principal investigators, confirm their conclusions and arrive at their conclusions and, and actually turn that data into kind of information and science. It goes on a, a great big journey into space. And then once it comes back, then you can get your samples and that's the start of the journey for the science that the scientist gets to do. So that's the end of our journey as engineers and then the start of the science. Amazing. So let's get started on that science. More Moon Trees Live 2 episodes are on their way. In one week, we'll explore how scientists tested the tree seeds after they returned to Earth. In two weeks, we'll find out how the tree seeds were planted in a nursery. In three weeks, join us for a live question and answer program where our experts will answer your questions live. Moon Trees Live 2, the journey continues. So be sure to blast off and check out all of our videos. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Three, two, one.